Hi, my name is Ishan Chatterjee, and I'm going to be presenting today on behalf of my co-authors, Olga, Tadeusz, Richard, and Professor Shweta Patel at the University of Washington Ubicomp Lab. Over the next 10 minutes, I'll be taking you through our paper, Augmented Silkscreen. In this paper, we looked at designing augmented reality interactions for electrical engineers and technicians to assist them in debugging printed circuit boards. We'll start with a little bit of background. A printed circuit board, or PCB, is a sheet of fiberglass with buried conductive paths to connect electrical components in the same way that wires connect components on a breadboard. There are actually likely dozens of PCBs in the room you're in right now. They're in everything from Instapots to Furbies to the phone or laptop you're watching this on. Here's a PCB I took out of an Apple Thunderbolt monitor. As you can see, these PCBs can be exceedingly dense and complex. Let's take a closer look at this one. All of these items that you see on the surface are components, such as resistors, capacitors, and integrated circuits. One of these boards can have tens, hundreds, or thousands of components on them, many smaller than a breadcrumb or a head of a pin. So how do electrical engineers design such a board? The electrical engineering design process typically starts with designing a circuit to meet a set of functional requirements. The logic of the circuit is formalized into a schematic diagram, which visualizes the circuit's components as symbols, and the circuit's interconnections as topological lines between the component's pins. This logic is then transferred to a layout diagram, where components and the connections between them are placed in physical coordinate space. And finally, the design is then physically fabricated and assembled into a functional PCB. During the process of debugging a new PCB design, electrical engineers must constantly move between the circuit diagrams and board layout diagrams on their computer and the physical circuit board on the desk in front of them in order to validate their design and understand the nature of a design failure. Augmented reality has been cited as an effective paradigm for reducing this overhead of tasks with repeated contact switching particularly those with spatial associations, like the ones that we see engineers must do during PCB debugging. So that brings us to our central research question. Can augmented reality assist electrical engineers in their PCB debugging workflows? And also, how can it best support them? We attacked this problem in three parts. We first ran a needs finding study in which we collected opportunities and challenges, pain points that were offered by our users. From this, we derived a set of design considerations that we could then apply to part two, which was designing the interactions. And then finally, in part three, we evaluated these interactions with our users. We recruited a handful of participants from academic labs in industry settings. From the first study, we derived a set of design considerations that we could then apply as we designed our interaction techniques. The first we've discussed already is to reduce context switching and facilitate pattern matching. The second is to show relevant information without cluttering the view. And here participants expressed interest in having context relevant information accessible directly on the PCB and through the design files as well, but were wary of excess visual clutter. Third, we wanted to support habitual and intuitive interactions with the PCB. While participants each followed slightly different methods of localizing issues and taking measurements, they generally followed a common approach. So any AR system should simplify methods of taking measurements and seeking information, but it should not depart greatly from their current habits or their workflows. And finally, we wanted to facilitate collaboration. So a few of the participants noted that finding design elements and following measurement procedures were exacerbated when working with collaborators who are less familiar with a particular design. So then we took these design considerations and applied them towards formulating interaction techniques. From our discussions, we found a few base fundamental tasks that we could target with our interaction techniques. The first set dealt with augmented visualization, that is, taking information from the design files on the computer and bringing them to the PCB, such as element localization, where participants can select a component or other elements, such as net and pin, on the schematic or layout, and have that augmented for them directly on the board. The second set dealt with augmented interaction, where information from the board was taken and brought to the design file. So just taking a measurement on the board 
and having that measurement written back to the design file. And as you can see here in the information flow diagram, what might have taken multiple steps, uh, that's the traditional method in gray, um, as described to us by the participants, can now be done more efficiently uh, with augmented reality interactions, what you see here in blue. Let's check out a video to help visualize some of these interactions. Here's a mock-up of what an augmented reality workbench for an electrical engineer might look like. A user has the view of the schematic and layout on the monitor. A benchtop multimeter connected to the PC can obtain measurements and an overhead camera projector system can provide augmentations directly on the physical PCB sitting on the user's desk. We work with engineers to design a few core interactions. By selecting a component in the schematic or layout view, the corresponding component on the board is identified. Similarly, by selecting a pin or net in the schematic or layout view, the corresponding pin or net on the board is identified. Identifying components on schematic and layout view directly by pointing on PCB. Identifying pins and nets on schematic and layout view directly by pointing on PCB. Okay, now that we have these core interactions, we can take these as building blocks and synthesize workflows that reflect the workflows the participants discussed during the needs finding study. Here, we'll take a look at some of those. For example, here a user takes a measurement on the PCB with a multimeter. These measurement pin locations are recognized and the measurement is annotated on the schematic and layout views. During the process of board bring up, the user wishes to confirm whether the power rails are within design specifications. The user specifies desired power rails and optionally adds test bounds. The measurement points are indicated on the board sequentially as the user takes a measurement with the multimeter. The value is captured. In a remote debugging scenario, the electrical engineer has a view of the schematic and layout, while the remote operator performing the debugging has an augmented visualization of the PCB. The engineer asks the operator to identify whether a particular component is installed properly. The operator sees the highlighted component and confirms the component is installed. The engineer asks the operator to take measurement on a particular net. The operator performs the procedure and the engineer finds the measurement to be out of bounds. Okay, after synthesizing these core interactions and workflows, we took these back to the participants in our last study, uh, which consisted of three parts. The first was to collect feedback on core interactions and workflows. There's a lot of qualitative feedback discussion and detail in the paper, so I'll just cover some of the highlights here. Participants particularly liked the interactions that helped them find components and pro points on the PCB. They liked the diagnostic measurement workflow, which aided in logging unstructured measurement queries with associated pro points. They liked the visual inspection workflow, which immediately provided element metadata at the board without having to reference the design file. And finally, they liked the bring up workflow, which allowed for unambiguous, spatially co-localized and potentially automated pro point visualizations for directed measurement workflows. Next, we evaluated varying certain attributes of these interactions, including preferences on how to select items, how much information to display on the PCB, and where to put it. In the interest of time, I won't go into the results of this section, but I encourage you to see the paper if you're interested. And finally, we took a subset of these interactions and performed a time task with the participants. We developed an interactive prototype to facilitate this remotely, where the users could use their own touchscreen device as a standard for the printed circuit board. Across two different tasks, participants were more efficient with AR interactions, seen here in blue, as compared to traditional method that you see here in gray. Additionally, they expressed higher ease and confidence with the AR interactions. So what's next? I think the natural continuation would be to work towards designing and developing a real system that we can test in person as soon as the pandemic comes to a close. From our discussions, we learned a number of specific practical expectations from the user base, including items like the precision of augmentations and the tools with which the system would need to be linked. And we described some of these in the paper. We also understand which workflows are seen to be specifically valuable and also the type of workflows these interactions would serve. We're also excited to see the space grow. In this work, we find that despite professional populations having access to very powerful tools, 
there are many gaps in the usability of their systems. We also see that the bulk of the work done by the HCI community has focused on supporting maker, educational, and a hobbyist populations. So we hope this paper will inspire more work towards supporting hardware workflow challenges in professional populations as well. Thank you.